Good afternoon, everyone. Dr. Nicole Brantley here. So glad to be before you guys today. I hope you all are doing well. Um, I want to send a special shout out to those of you and those whose families have been affected by Hurricane Helene. Um, I did not have a rough time, thank God, but I do know a lot of people who were without power, continue to be without power. Um, lots of flooding um, and not so far away town by the name of Asheville, Asheville, North Carolina, up in the mountains was severely, severely affected and still are. So um, prayers to them and prayers to you and your family if uh, you have suffered in any way in this um, devastating disaster of a hurricane. And I think that it is a testament of what's more to come. You know, that's just my opinion and I won't get into it and why I even said that. But I'm just being open and honest with you guys. I honestly think um, it's just like a little drip in the pot of what's probably to come. So I say to you, get prepared. Make sure that your pantries are stocked. Make sure that you have enough water on hand. Make sure that you have a generator. If you don't, um, you know, start working towards getting one. Make sure you have food that you guys can eat, um, you know, that are in packaging. It's not my first choice, <laughs> but it's definitely something back up. If we are in an emergency situation, we got to do what we got to do, right? So today I am going to be talking about OMAD and IF. So you're like, Nicole, what is that? <laughs> OMAD is one meal a day. That's what it stands for. And IF stands for intermittent fasting. So I want to talk about that um, today. Um, and I also want to um, talk about the different methods within intermittent fasting and the benefits of one meal a day and some things that it will help resolve. So some solutions that it could possibly bring to what you may have going on in your body. Make sure that you share this live out. I'm going to do that really quickly um, to get some people on the live. All right. So for those of you who are new to my channel and for those of you who may be watching over on YouTube, if you guys are not following me on YouTube, Instagram, my handle over there is also to uh, make sure that you are following over there, Womb Therapist. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you're liking this video, giving it a thumbs up so that it can be in the algorithm and people can see the content that is being created. There are tons of videos over there for you to go and check out. So. Again, I'm Dr. Nicole Brantley. I'm affectionately known as the womb therapist. I help women who have fibroids, PCOS, endometriosis, those who have trouble conceiving, take the option of hysterectomy and other surgeries off of the table and truly get to the root of your healing, right? Because a surgeon can cut out everything except for cause. I recently was in conversation with someone who got their gallbladder removed and they're doing, they did a liver detox. And guess what? Having their gallbladder removed didn't resolve the issue because they saw tons of fat coming out in their liver detox. So a surgeon can cut out everything except for cause. You, you got to take the stairs. You can't always get on the escalator. You can't always get on the elevator. You can't always try to take the quick and easy route because it doesn't work. You have to do the work in order to see things work a lot of the times. So the name of my company is Fresh. It stands for Feminine Restoration Education and Solutions for Women's Health. So again... I help more than just women, but that is my primary basis of who I help to heal their, their body. And, and I just shared with you that that's through healing their fibroids, PCOS, endometriosis, trouble conceiving, um, both fungal and bacterial infections. You just name it, right? That's what we're going to address in women. And then I've also helped men who have had issues with their prostate, whether that be prostate enlargement, prostate cancer, um, diabetes, which is usually associated with prostate issues heart issues, all kinds of things, because the reality is that all things are connected and you can't heal the human body in isolation. You have to do, you have to put your arms around that whole thing. I call it wraparound services. You have to address mind, body, spirit, and I'm super big on dressing, addressing emotions because everything is tied back to the emotions, right? People cut cut their fibroids out all of the time with myomectomies and they come back six months, one year later. Why? Because you never address the root issue, first of all, first and foremost, and you never address the emotional baggage that is associated to that, excuse me, which is um, nursing a hurt from a partner or a blow to the feminine ego, 
okay? And that can mean many different things for many different people, but we deep dive within that, you know, in our one-on-one -on -one consultation, so I won't get into that today, but everything that you're dealing with, excuse me, has an emotional root that needs to be addressed, all right? So we're talking about one meal a day or OMAD. If you hear me say OMAD, that is interchangeable with one meal a day. And if you hear me say IF, that is interchangeable with uh, intermittent fasting. All right. So intermittent fasting quickly is a dietary strategy that involves you eating during specific windows and fasting for the rest of the day. Okay. So you're consuming less calories. More, most people intermittent fast to be in a calorie deficit. A lot of them are trying to lose weight. There are other things and other reasons, but that is what people do it for the most, to consume less. So now I want to go into um, the types of intermittent fastings very briefly. The most popular intermittent fasting um, method is the 16-8 method. So this method involves eating within an eight-hour window and fasting for the remaining six hours, 16 hours, okay? This is oftentimes recommended for losing belly fat. And this one stops you from overeating at night, okay? Because your window is gonna be cut off by the time it's time for you to go to bed because you only have an eight hour window open. So depending on what time you start, some people may start at eight in the morning, right? So they're done pretty quick. Others may start at noon so that they're done by um, eight at night, right? So it just depends on when you start your fasting window and when your 16 hours will begin for you to start fasting, meaning that you consume nothing, right? Some people may consume water, some people do not, right? They, they just cut it all off, everything is off, fasting from everything. So that's the 16-8 method. You are fasting for 16 hours, most of that to include sleep, and then your, your, open in, uh, your eating window is open for eight hours hours. And I'm going to talk about suggestions during those eating windows, like what you want to be consuming, because a lot of people think just because they fast that during their one meal a day or during their eight hour uh, eating window, that they can just eat whatever they want, or they can consume lots of highly acidic foods just because they're only eating once. And that's, we'll talk about it. I don't want to get into it right now. So that's the first method. That's the most, one of the most popular methods. Um, and that's the 16, eight. You're fasting for 16, your eating window's open for eight. The next one I'll briefly talk about is 5-2, the 5-2 method. You eat normally for five days, right? So people just do whatever it is that they want for five days. And then on those last two days, they cut back 20% for two days. So they eat less. So let's say they do what they want Monday through Friday, they cut back on the weekends, Okay, that's just an example. I'm sure most people don't save their weekends for their cutback days. They probably do their thing on the weekends and then it's two days during the week that they're like, okay, I'm pulling back. I'm fasting on Monday and Tuesday. I'm gonna really cut back on what I'm eating. So that's the 5-2 method. Um, then there's one called the warrior diet, right? And this one is very intense. It's an intense type of intermittent fasting where you eat very little during a 20-hour fasting window. So they have four hours open to consume what they need to consume and they're fasting for 20 hours, all right? And then they they usually have one large meal at night. So they're usually fasting all throughout the morning, early afternoon, and then they open their window up sometime during the evening, late afternoon, early evening, and it's only open for four hours. And when they're done with their one big meal of the day, they're done. And then they're fasting to the next day, 20 hours later. Okay, so that's the warrior diet. Then you have alternate day. This uh, fasting method is every other day of fasting. All right, so it's harder to stick to. Uh, a lot of people have mood swings during this one. A lot of people are dealing with hunger during the alternate day fasting because you're eating like you want one day and then you're taking away everything the whole next day. You're fasting for 24 hours. So the body is like, where's the food, right? And it's not one that I really recommend. If you pick a day out of the, like I used to do Mondays. I used to take Monday and I just used to mono fruit eat and fast for most of my day. So I would break my fasting window at like 12. Um, I would stop eating probably by six. Um, and then that would be it. Whatever I ate in that little window, that would be it. 
And, um, but I did that every Monday. So I do recommend when you do certain things with your body, you do it on a consistent basis. All right. So that, that alternate day can be tough, hard to stick to because some people get moody. So they'll have mood swings. They'll be hungry. Um, and then they'll be dealing with other side effects. So that was another one. Now this, this next one is called the eat, stop, eat diet. I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of that one, but this method of intermittent fasting involves a full fast for 24 hours once or twice a week, right? So this is not an everyday intermittent fasting thing. You're going to pick one or two days out of the week and you are going to, for example, eat dinner at six, right? And then the next fast, excuse me, and then you fast until the next day at 6 p.m. so that you don't break your fast for 24 hours, but you don't do that two days in a row. You pick two separate days with maybe a day or two in between and you do that once or twice a week. That is called the eat, stop, eat diet. All right, so only once or twice a week, but not in a row. Most do this for weight loss, but this one can be dangerous under certain circumstances. So if you're on certain medications, um, if you had, are dealing with certain chronic conditions, I don't recommend you doing a stop, a eat, stop, eat diet. Um, you wanna try to be consistent with your body, as I just said, and what you do with it. So if I'm going to break my fast at 12, I'm going to break my fast at 12 or very close to it every single day if that's how I'm going to fast. I want my body to know that this is what we're expecting because this is what we pretty much do all the time. The same thing with sleep. If you go to bed at 8 or 9 o'clock on a weekday, you should be doing that on the weekends. You should be doing that when you're on vacation. You don't really want to switch up with your body. You want to be as consistent as you can be so that the body knows what it is to expect from you. Okay? Another popular, um, out of the 16-8 is a popular one, but the other popular intermittent fasting method is the 14-10, okay? It's very similar to the 16-8, but this one, you are fasting for 14 hours and you're 10, you have a 10-hour eating window, okay? It's a little bit easier to stick to um, than the 16-8 because of the larger eating window, but just because it's a larger eating window, I don't want you to think that it's not as effective. In fact, there was a recent study done that showed that people that followed the 1410 diet plus they were well while they were incorporating or eating nutritious food and they incorporated consistent exercise lost more weight than those who did the 1212. Okay? And then the 1212 is the or is also known as the overnight fasting, which is the simplest form of of intermittent fasting because you limit your daily eating window to 12 hours or less. So you eat for 12 hours or less and then you fast the rest of that time. So eight hours of those fasting hours are usually you sleeping, right? And then maybe the three or four hours prior to bed, you're not consuming anything. So that's the 12-12. So most people lost weight with that 14-10, 10 hours of fasting. I mean, yeah, 10 hours of your eating window and 14 hours of fasting. And they incorporated nutritious food during that time. And they also incorporated exercise, consistent exercise, all right? This, this fast also showed a more significant improvement in blood glucose levels after just eight weeks. So two months and they saw um, their blood, people's blood glucose, glucose levels um, after two months level out and be consistent. So quickly, some of the benefits of OMAD or one meal a day and intermittent fasting, most people do this for weight loss, right? Because they want to be in a calorie deficit. They want to be bringing in less food, which is a good thing. Bringing in less cooked food is the best thing you can do for your body. I've been doing one meal a day for years. I didn't even know until maybe two years ago that they had this term coined OMAD. I was like, what is that? I'm like, oh, I've been doing that. I didn't even know that they had a name for it, right? And it's because of so many reasons um, that I started to understand about the chemistry of the body and just how I felt when I had less food in my body and, um, you know, maintaining the weight that I wanted to be at. That's what it's really about, 
right? You don't want to constantly eat, 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 and your body's always having to digest and use up energy, so you're always tired. So there's multiple benefits to this. Weight loss being one, regular regulated blood sugar levels is another, right? The prevention of chronic disease, because when you constantly are bringing in cooked meals, all, all cooked meals leave behind acid ash, right? So you're going to have acid left behind in your body. And most people eat cooked meals, but they eat them three times a day. And they're eating meat with every single meal, right? And they're eating fats with every single meal. And the body, the human body does not require that. You actually overwork it and make it work really hard. So another benefit to OMAD and IF is mental clarity, right? And better focus and attention. You want that mental acuity. That's important because if you're like in the middle of your sentence and you're like, what was I about to say? Where was I about to go in that room for? What are... It's time to start cleaning things up in your head cavity when you're having um, little lapses in that way. And you're like, let me go back to doing what I was doing so I can remember what I was coming in this room for, right? That's a sign that there's too much acid in your head cavity, right? And I dealt with that with a lot of people who I did the ear, my ear candling services for. They would be like, oh my God, my memory is terrible. Like, I don't, I don't remember where I put my keys. I don't remember where I parked my car. That is saying that you have a head cavity full of acid. You're eating a diet too much in acid um, and you're acidic from head to toe, right? And so you want to address that. Definitely joining the next upcoming detox program will help you with that and so many other things. It starts this coming Monday, October 7th. So if you want to get in, you got to get in. There's a kit that's highly recommended but not required to participate. But get in, get your seat. Get ready to start preparing mentally. We're less than a week away, right? Today, we're six days away from getting started on that. OMAD and IF also helps with reversal of aging. The truth is the more cooked foods you eat, the quicker you've aged yourself. Your, your body's working hard, right? And these cooked foods take away your youth. We have to incorporate more life-giving, raw, living foods into our diet, sunfire foods, foods that are fed by the sun, right? I was just doing a, a, a reading over one of my son's assignments. Fruits are foods that are grown by the sun. They are producers, right? And they do many great things for your body. He was, he was teaching me about the food chain and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so fascinating. I'm like, oh, that's what they call that? You know, but studying with your kids can give you a whole new perspective on a lot of things. So, also, in addition to reversing aging, it can help reverse high blood pressure. I have a lot of clients who introduce intermittent fasting into their, their way of life to help with their blood pressure because the reality of high blood pressure is that first and foremost, you're probably dealing with compromised kidneys that are not filtering as good as they should. That's one. So your waste is not leaving. Your uric acid is not leaving through your urine as it should, right? So your kidneys are uh, filtering very poorly. Your adrenals are probably down and they're not helping to pump and filter that waste through your kidneys. But the other thing is you're highly acidic. That's why your numbers are high, hypertension, right? So you have a lot of acid coursing through your body, through your veins, and it gives that high read because it's so much acid in the body. So when you diminish or neutralize the acid in your body, you have a higher blood pressure reading. And when you eat less, you will see that happen, right? And then when you eat the right things, because I'm going to talk about that, that shortly. So um, a lot of people fast for to put their body into ketosis, or a lot of people fast from carbs and eat a very um, meat heavy and um, they get rid of the rices and the potatoes and things of that nature, which is good to a certain extent. The rices, you can still eat potatoes. You just don't want to ruin them by putting oils and butters on them. So potatoes get a bad rep, but they're actually good for the body, right? But you want to hydrate your cells, not starve them. Ketosis is cellular starvation. And a lot of people don't know that. So you you might be getting the, the, the short-term results up front. Oh, girl, I'm losing weight. Oh, my stomach is fall, you know going flat and the, oh, my arms are looking smaller. But there's a lot of blowback that's happening if you're eating a very heavy meat diet, a very heavy and fat diet. You're eating steaks and chickens and pizza and all, the, all this dairy and all of these things that are high in fat. 
you're going to get blowback. You're going to destroy your GI tract. You're going to destroy your kidneys. You're going to have a fatty, stagnant, and sluggish liver because you're not eating foods that are meant for human consumption. Think about the cow, right? The cow grazes on grass. Why do you need to eat beef? Go where he goes or she goes. Go get it from the source, which is the plants, which is which are the greens. We don't need secondhand animal protein, okay? The body not, does not require all of that. And nor does it know what to do with it. And that's why we have a very sick America. That's why we have a very obese America. Because we don't know how to properly care for our temples. We're eating things that we're not designed to eat. Period. We are frugivores at the core. We should be incorporating more fruit than anything. And people are so afraid of fruit because they have the wrong people teaching them about fruit and about sugars. Not all sugars are created equally. So you cannot compare white refined sugar inside of a Kit Kat and a Snickers bar and that's in every other thing that has added sugars like these high sugary drinks and high fructose corn syrup and corn syrup and all these other things to sugar that comes from a piece of fruit. God made no mistakes. <laughs> None. Right? When you get out in nature, you have a you have com everything you need complete in a piece of fruit. Everything, the carbohydrate is there, right? It's a simple carb. It's a simple protein that the body knows exactly what to do with, how to break down and how to use it to fuel the body, okay? So hydrate your cells, don't starve them. Ketosis is cellular starvation. So when you're, con when you're eating one meal a day, when you're doing the OMAD method, you want to make sure that your meal is a hydrating meal, not one full of dehydrated foods, right? You don't wanna be having steak with eggs and toast and butter and jelly. There's really nothing nutritious about that and grits and all of the things that we like to eat for breakfast foods in America, bagels and cream cheese. And then when you're introducing them, most of the time, the it's not, it's not noon. The liver doesn't want to be clocked in. We're clocking the liver in early with creamer in our coffee. And, and coffee's a one on the pH scale. Very acidic, right? And very addictive and very bad for your body. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief. I know you've been taught, oh, coffee's good and the coffee bean this and the coffee. Yeah, but when you break down um, or you're continuously drinking coffee every single morning, you're breaking things down, right? It is super acidic. It is no coincidence that cancer is at an all-time high, nor all, all of these other chronic diseases because your elimination pathways are blocked. They can't even get rid of your waste. We're doing it backwards. This is why I want you guys to join me for my Fall Equinox Detox Program. I'm only going to be doing four detoxes a year. I'm no longer doing the every month or every couple of months because guess what? When people think they have something to go hop into every month, they don't take it as seriously. But it's important to understand that you should detox with the seasons to maintain great health and to maintain your weight, right? And to maintain so many other things within your body. So you want to make sure that you're not eating um, your one meal a day is not super constipating and super dehydrating foods. That's how you get constipated. You're eating constipated foods, things that are going to constipate you because they are con they are hard and locked in in nature think about grits when they sit in a pot and dry and you go to scrape them out the pot because you're trying to clean it out the pot what do you think is going on inside of your your intestines okay meat that you have to chew 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 we don't have 22 to 20 i mean we don't have 10 to 12 feet of intestines we have 22 to 30 something feet of intestines and so we're not like carnivores where all of that meat leaves our body a lot of it gets stuck along the colon wall and we have old fecal matter in there and so we have a lot of people who have malabsorption issues they're not absorbing all of their nutrients to utilize so their weight they're either underweight or overweight <clears throat> so make sure if you're going to do intermittent fasting your eating windows are six hours 10 hours or 12 hours long which the most popular are 16 and 8. So you're fasting for 16, you're eating for 8, or the eating window is open for 8. And you're fasting for 14 and your eating hours open for 10. Make sure in that eating window, even if you're just a one meal a day person, because a lot of people get this part twisted. You can, even though you're eating one cooked meal, right? Because I'm, oh, I do OMAD. I, I didn't know it had a name like I told you until about two years ago. I still don't use that term. But for the sake of this live, I will. I only consume one meal a day. 
of cooked food, right? And sometimes it's not even cooked, but all throughout my morning and my afternoon before I cut it off about six or seven at night, I am waking up to lemon water. I am consuming an herbal tea. I'm gonna make me a smoothie or have a smoothie bowl. I'm going to have a couple of fresh pressed juices. Sometimes I might have a salad in there, right? With a clean dressing, usually oil free. Excuse me, one that you make yourself because you know what's in it. I have not found one salad dressing on the market that isn't trash or has some sort of trash ingredient in it, even if it's just one. Most, if you go and browse the salad the salad dressing aisle, every single one of them is gonna start with soy bean oil, if not canola oil or safflower oil or cotton seed, like the stuff that you just don't be don't need to be putting in your body. Seed oils are very detrimental to our health, very detrimental to our health. And they're in a lot of things, especially soybean oil. So you want to remove those things at all costs. You hear me? All costs. Try to stay off of oil as best you can. And when you're in that eating window, again, you want to make sure you're consuming predominantly raw foods, water, structured if you can with lemon or lime, juice, cold press that you made yourself or that you bought from a juice bar, herbal teas. I have a whole complete herbal tea line, herbal tea collection. Get in, get with one of them, get with a couple of them, right? Especially during this time of year, virus defense tea blend is great. Cold and cough tea blend is great. Womb healing tea will be back in stock very soon. That's another great one. So you want to make sure you're consuming herbal teas. You want to make sure you're eating fresh fruit. Always make sure you have at least two apples a day. Some oranges, whatever is juicy, watery, and in season. Grapes are great at this time of the year. Don't trip out if they're not seeded. If you can find organic and not seeded, great. If I can find seeded but not organic, that's what I go for, okay? So smoothies, smoothie bowls, those are the kinds of things that you want to be taking in. So again, hydrate your cells. Don't starve them. That's what keto is. That's what ketosis is. And it breaks my heart when I see people living like that. And I know what they're doing to their body, but they think they're doing what the trend says to do, right? Who do I recommend this for? I recommend one meal a day um, eating and intermittent fasting for people who are stiff. When you are walk, moving about your day, when you get up first thing in the morning, you are stiff. It hurts for you to walk down the steps. It hurts for you to put your heels down. You're stiff because you're highly acidic. You're consuming a diet that's way too high in acids. You have to bring in some fresh raw foods to help neutralize those acids. I also recommend people that are dealing with stiffness and high levels of acidity to get in this next fall equinox program that starts on Monday, October the 7th. You will be surprised at how quickly your stiffness goes away once you begin to hydrate on a cellular level, once you begin to get your kidneys filtering, once you begin to properly pair your foods. All of these are the things that you're gonna learn within this program. So it's not just another detox program, it's very high on the education side. Yes, you're gonna get smoothie recipes. Yes, I'm gonna post it almost daily about things you could be consuming, meal ideas and all of the things, but the education is the key so that when you're long gone from this program, you understand how to take care of your human body, right? And a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not gonna get in on this one. Oh, I might have to miss this one. Listen, there's always gonna be something. That's why I called, well, I call it lifestyle of detox. Eating a lifestyle of detox. You have to learn how to incorporate this in your everyday lifestyle. You don't have to miss anything because this is how you should be eating. You should be packing a certain thing if, you, or if you're on a plane or if you're out and about for your day. You should be having things in the car with you so you don't get caught by the trap houses. So Wendy's and Bojangles and Cookout and Popeye's and who, when, uh, what's, I already said Wendy's, Burger King and all of them. Nobody gets you, not even with their acrylamide fries that are super rancid and super horrible for your body, for your skin, for your gut, for your life, right? It's time out for us being acidic from head to toe. We have to understand the part that we're playing in this. 
And make sure you're always watching my stories on Instagram because I'm always going to be educating you in those stories, right? My content and other people's content and information. Sharing with you the things that you need to understand to be the healthiest version of yourself. So I also recommend this for people who are in joint pain. Okay. Hey, Shaquilla. Gotta come through with it, sis. Joint pain. If you are dealing with joint pain, you need to be eating one meal a day. You need to be pulling the meats from your diet, especially that chicken, beef, and pork. If you're eating sandwiches, you definitely need to be pulling those lunch meats. I go back to my video on nitrates and nitrites. Horrible for the body. Okay? So if you're stiff and you're in joint pain or you have some sort of arthritis diagnosis, you have deposits of acids in your joints. You got to get rid of that. How do you do that? By neutralizing the acid in your body. So go into one meal a day and intermittent fasting is going to be great for you. If you have high blood pressure, OMAD and IF is going to be great for you. If you are overweight and you know you need to lose weight, but all of the things that you're doing are not working, guess what? Secret, lean in. Your kidneys are not filtering. You got to bring in the raw foods to make your kidneys filter. When your kidneys start filtering, the weight will fall off. When your liver is not fatty and stagnant and you do a flush, the weight will begin to fall off. But you've got to eat properly for this human body. And most of us are not. You cannot have one meal a day and it's all processed. You might as well eat what you want for the rest of the dog on day, right? Just because you're in a calorie deficit and yeah, you're going to see some weight loss because you're not eating as much. You're still not bringing nutrition to your body. You're still not bringing nourishment to your body. And when you don't bring nourishment, all you're bringing is inflammation. That's all the body recognizes it as. And it's fighting for its life. You're making your body work really hard. You're really congesting and clogging up your inner terrain. You're blocking and clogging up all of your elimination pathways to help you get rid of waste so that your body has homeostasis, right? It's functioning optimally. Things are moving like they should. There's no blockages. There's, no, there's nothing going on that shouldn't be going on. But we have to eat the right foods in order for us to get there. Who do I recommend this for? For those who are diabetic and pre-diabetic. All right? And I always say this. Type 2 diabetes is a lifestyle disease. You caused that. You created that by your lifestyle, by your diet, the things you're eating, the things you're drinking. If you're doing recreational drugs and alcohol, that's a huge contributor. Alcohol, liquor, wine, beer, nothing but acid. Beer, yeast, acid, and sugar. Okay? Wine, acid, and sugar. Liquor, straight acid. Like, we have to stop glorifying acid and liquor. You're destroying your liver. You're destroying your kidneys. And you're talking about you need a nightcap. Girl, boy, man, if you don't go get you some tart cherry juice and quit playing, go get you some apothecary and stop playing, that needs to be your nightcap. Normalize putting the right kinds of things in your body before bed. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to get off my soapbox there. <laughs> so if you're stiff, you're highly acidic, you have joint pain, you're overweight, you have high blood pressure, you're diabetic or pre-diabetic, you're chronically ill, you have a chronic diagnose, diagnosis, you're on 1 to 25 meds, you need to be in this next detox program. You need to learn what it is to eat one meal a day or OMAD. You need to be getting on somebody's intermittent fasting train for some time. Fasting for 16, eating for 8, or fasting for 14, eating for 10. You can break your fast at whatever time you like. If you want to start at 8 in the morning, you can. 9 in the morning, 10, you can. If you want to start at noon, right? A lot of the times, I don't put anything in my body before noon. I might have some lemon water. Of course, I will. Some tea, some herbal tea. But I'm not, I take the full advantage of when it's my eating window to make sure that it is high raw before I eat ever put any cooked foods in my body. And when I have that one meal, that's it. I'm not even hungry. I've been doing this for so many years. I'm not even hungry. And if I happen to get hungry because what I ate was very light and it digested or it was a mono meal or it wasn't even cooked, I'm going to drink some herbal tea. 
I'm going to have a smoothie. I'm going to have a smoothie bowl. I'm going to have a fresh piece of fruit, but it's going to still be within my window. It ain't going to be outside at six to seven o'clock at night because I need three to four hours for whatever I bring in to digest before I go to bed. Because if you go to bed and you still have food in your stomach, even though you think you're sleeping, your body is still working. It is still using its energy towards digestion to break down what is still in your stomach. And you need to be laying on your left side in order for that to continue to happen. Because if you lay on your right side, it won't allow for it. Okay? That's another lie for another day. So again, if you're stiff, highly acidic, have joint pain, overweight, high blood pressure, pre-diabetic or diabetic, OMAD and intermittent fasting will be great for you. No rice during that one meal. We're not doing sticky gluey. That's going to destroy your GI tract, which is probably already destroyed. Right? No smoking, no drinking. Those are all dehydrating activities. Cooked foods are dehydrated activities. So you want to limit them. So when you have the one meal a day, this is when you can see the belly fat go away. The weight loss starts to happen because you're at a calorie deficit. And if you add nutritious foods during your eating window time and you work out consistently, it doesn't have to be major. You don't have to be up in the gym, hardcore gym rat. Walking is super effective, yet low impact. Okay, I, I do step aerobics, hip hop step, step aerobics for 30 to 40 minutes every day. I take the weekends off. If I'm feeling froggy, I do the weekends. Okay, but we got to take care of these temples. If we want longevity, if we want vitality, if we want beautiful skin, if we want all organs that are working optimally, we have to do the things now so that we can have the body we want later. Right. So many people think they got time. So many people are destroying their temples now and they think they have time. It's a lot harder to fix a temple than to just be proactive and prevent the bullshit in the first place. OK, excuse my language if there's children around. But we have to do what we have to do. It's time out for playing. There's so many sick people everywhere I go. I'm like, my God, it is just so hard to watch. I can see death on people. It's a blessing and a curse. People are so sick today because they don't know what real food is. They are only eating processed, right? Processed, processed, processed foods that, that are not even real, that don't have an ounce of water in them, that are 99.9% .9 chemically made up. Okay? And we and I'm not arguing with the de the Dr. Sebi people with the I can't eat broccoli, I can't eat cauliflower, I can't. That's better than a piece of steak. That's better than a piece of chicken. Okay? We we're not going to go there. We don't have the best food in America anyway, especially not our fruit. But we do the best that we can with what we have and we still get results. I see it every day. I see it every day with clients. Good afternoon, my friend. Movement is medicine. Absolutely. And as too many Americans want to eat and move that mouth all day, but don't want to move that body. Get up and move your body. Sweat out that fat. Sweat out those toxins. Do it when you don't feel like it. Make it, a, schedule it into your day, right? At one point in time, I was getting up at five, taking my amino so that they could be uh, digested, pre-digested by, by 23 minutes. By eight, by 5.30, I was working out. For me now, it's 8 to 8.30 or 8.40, whatever time I finish. But you got to make it happen. And it's for your mental health. When you work out, you feel amazing mentally. Amazing mentally. So if you are just tuning in, I'm not going to belabor the moment. I am going to ask you to join me for the upcoming group detox program, October 7th, which is next Monday. Right, It's a 30-day group detox program high on the education side. Yes, you're going to get meal ideas. Yes, you're going to get smoothie ideas. But you're going to learn about your kidneys. You're going to learn how to change this mindset. You're going to learn about food combining. And you're going to learn what the benefits and why it is that we need to detox often. The importance of detoxification. So get in there. Grab your seat. Do not wait. There's a kit that I would like for you to order. It's highly recommended, but it is not required to participate in the group detox program. Um, if you're just tuning in, make sure you watch this from the beginning where I talked about the, in, the different intermittent fasting methods. Find one that works for you. Look it up. Do your own due diligence and research. Begin to incorporate that and see how you feel. Listen to your body. You know, you got people that, are, oh, that doesn't work or that doesn't this or that. Doesn't. You can't listen to people. Listen to your body. What does your body say when you do X, Y, or Z? 
right? What does your body say when you give yourself nutritious food, exercise, you go to bed at a decent hour, you get seven to eight hours of sleep? What does your body say? Not what, not what your friend said. Oh, that didn't work for me. You don't know what else she was, he or she was doing, <laughs> right? That made it not work for them. So do you. You have to do what works for you, right? And I'm just here giving advice. It's up to you to, to leave it or take it. You don't even have to listen to what I say, right? As a, a holistic doctor, you can listen to your body. And sometimes people don't understand their body's language. So I tread lightly when I say that because sometimes when people have a Herkimer or a healing crisis because their body is cleaning out the, 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 the toxicity and the debris and the mucus and the this and the that, they don't think it's working. Oh, I feel like I got the flu. Oh, I feel sick. Honey, you are toxic. And you do it now or you do it later. But you're going to feel this way until you get that trash out of your body. So it doesn't mean that it's not working. It means you need to keep going, right? Aid your body in the process. So thank you guys so much for being here um, for today's live on OMAD, which is one meal a day and intermittent fasting. I hope to see you guys in the detox program. If you do some sort of intermittent fasting, if you incorporate this into your regimen, or if you start eating one meal a day and then you keep the rest of your day high raw with the things that I named, let me know how you're feeling in the thread in the comments on this video. So thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Don't forget to join and grab your seat at the detox program that starts in six days. We're six days away. We're counting down. We're getting in that group and preparing now. So the group is held in a private Facebook group. If you don't have Facebook, you either want to get one or you don't join. I don't have the manpower to send you all of the information that I put in there anywhere else to individual people. I just don't have that kind of capacity. Okay, so I hope to see you guys there. If you have any questions, ask them out in the thread. If you've been here for this long, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, give this video a thumbs up. If you not have, if you have not subscribed to Womb Therapist yet, please do so now. Help this video get in the algorithm and my other videos get into the algorithm so that people can see this. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. I'll see you guys in the next video. I love you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.